Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Here is me and Zara, she's actually been so naughty this morning. I've had to film some content so that's why I've got a full face of makeup on and it's like literally 10am but we move. Um, so I'm doing this video based on Emirates. So I've had so many questions asking me like when you work for Emirates, like how did you long, how long did you work there for? Like literally, I get questions all the time. So I thought if I do a YouTube video based on that, whenever anyone asks me, I can just send them straight over to my YouTube channel and say I've answered as many questions as I can over there. So I've wrote a load of questions down. I did a Q and A on Instagram a few weeks ago, um, and so many people asked me questions then. Um, so I'm gonna answer them all for you today. Right, okay, so the first question is, was it hard leaving your life in the UK to go and live in Dubai? Like, yes, that was the hardest part. I remember like a week before, I was like, what am I doing? Like, I just bought a house in the UK as well. I was literally leaving that to go and like live in Dubai. Um, like, I remember going to airport and leaving my mum all like, what am I doing? Like, I don't even want to do this. Like, I remember thinking in my head, I, I genuinely don't want to do it, but like, I can't tell people that. Um, and I just thought, do you know what, like, you've got to just go and see if you like it. Do you know, like, sometimes the biggest fear is, like, the best thing you can ever do. And, like, yeah, it might not work out, it might not be something that you want to do, but you've just got to try it, because if you don't do it, you'll never know. So that's my biggest advice, even for me, like, moving all the way to Dubai is such a ball ache, but you've got to do it. It was my dream job, like, that is what I wanted to do, like, long term. Like, if anyone's ever said to me, what's your dream job? Emirates, like, I want to work for Emirates. Um, what was the recruitment process? Um, so I actually just went on Emirates website and I'd seen that they've got applications like that you could fill out. So I literally just did it, didn't think all of it. And then I literally um, heard back from them and like, this was like end of 2021. Um, yeah, end of 2021. And then I heard back from them in like <clears throat> a couple of months. And then it were just, it were quite long winded to be fair. So like the first bit is like a little test online and then you have to answer a few uh, like a few questions as well and you send them off and then you also have to then go in person and then once you've done that that's like the confirmation like you've got the job um uh, so that is the recruitment process it's it is really hard like there is a lot to do however <laughs> sorry she's so needy um However, um, I feel like it's a lot easier to get into Emirates now than it ever has been. Like, I feel like Emirates were always just like a, a massive company that you could never really like get into. Whereas now I feel like it's a lot easier. So, um, how long were you cabin crew for? So I literally moved to Dubai in April, no March, like the end of March, very end of March. Um, and I left in June. Yeah, I was literally there like not even, like I was there a few months. I did four flights in total, but it my story is very different to like everyone else's. Like a lot of people like, obviously if I were there and I weren't enjoying it, I'd have gave it more time. But with Love Island, like they literally came into like play and were like, look, are you coming on the show or not? Like if you are, you're gonna fly to Mallorca in a week. And I'm in Dubai, literally lived there, like my whole life's there then now and I'm like, Oh my god what do i do so i literally quit emirates like i literally said like i need to leave with immediate effect and i just left and then i literally flew home the saturday and i flew to mallorca on the monday so my situation is very different i definitely would have gave emirates a lot more time if i'd have been like if i'd have not added love island but obviously that situation came into play so i had to make a decision really quick. I remember my mum FaceTiming me, she was like, have you made your mind up yet, what are you gonna do? And I just flipped the, like, the FaceTime camera around and it was just literally, all my cases packed up. <laughs> Which is really sad as well, because I um, I lived with two Greek girls and they were really nice, like, I really got along with them and yeah, we just, yeah, we were really good friends, so it was a shame to leave them. But yeah, I definitely belong in the UK. Um, so the next question is, the best and worst thing about being cabin crew. So with Emirates, I obviously, um, like you travel places, that is obviously the best thing. Like it, you live in Dubai as well, like it's so good. 
the best thing as well if you even if you don't work for Emirates I used to work for Jet2 before um, and I would just say like the social side of it so like I, oh my god um, so I literally love the social side of it like the work side is like being like connecting with like different people like just getting to know like random people and stuff and like you fly with different people every day so like every day is different um, and yeah you're just meeting loads of new people and you're socialising and you just like chat so much shit just about random stuff that you would never chat with like your friends about so yeah i definitely love that the worst thing about it is um rude customers like i know you get that in every job but i feel like flight attendant like they do get bad it is annoying um so yeah i'd say that that's the worst thing and also like if you're working for emirates like you've got to remember that not every culture is the same culture that you are so like people deal with stuff in different ways and like you've got to adapt to that like well you've got to remember this when you like flying for emirates and like you do learn about it and stuff um and like and even when when i fly with jet 2 and stuff in like a different airline but you are facing more customers that's not from where you're from in um like with emirates whereas like in england i used to like speak to people that were just from like leeds and like near me so yeah it's like easy communication um but yeah <clears throat> and then the next question is would you recommend it and what's the money like um <clears throat> i'd always recommend it yeah because just because it didn't work for me um like it doesn't mean it wouldn't work for anyone else like obviously everyone's different like that I've got like so many like good friends now in Dubai and they literally love it like but I get along with them girls like them girls are like my good friends I would say that like they're like my soulmates and it's like it's crazy because you think if you get along so well with someone and you're so alike then why can't you enjoy what they enjoy but it's like people just enjoy different things so I definitely would recommend doing it like if it's something that you want to do 100% do it and um, the money I wouldn't I wouldn't say like the money's bad it's just when you start when you first start you've got to be like really like watching your money and I would 100% recommend to go out to Dubai with savings like or if you've got a mum and dad that can help you that's a bonus because I've not Um, I'd literally bought my house just before I went so I had no savings whatsoever because I put them all in my house but that's another story Um, so yeah and obviously the cost of living is like really high over there in Dubai like it's not the same as UK so you are going to be spending more oh my god sorry she's literally just oh no um you are going to be spending more money because the cost of living is more obviously you don't pay a tax there but then like you are like cost of living is more expensive so I feel like that just sort of weighs it out but that's just my view <clears throat> um do you think you can be in a relationship whilst being cabin crew this is such a good question because so many people are and like i'm usually like well if it works for you then like and it does like it does work for some people like some people will have a relationship in the uk and live in dubai or people would have a relationship they're from brazil and their partners in brazil but i could never like I am not like a needy person at all but there's no way on earth that I could have my boyfriend living in the UK while I'm living in Dubai like if I were in a relationship and like I said oh I'm going to work for Emirates like that's it then like relationship is over are you joking okay. sorry no right compose myself yeah so if I was in a relationship and I said right I'm going to Dubai I'm going to work for Emirates I would expect then that relationship to be over like people make it work if they want to make it work it's fine but me personally like no I couldn't do it I just no um why did I quit so I feel like I've already covered that in a previous question um I um obviously got the chance to go on Love Island so I went and did it I chose that all over Emirates it was the biggest risk I have ever made like that could have not worked out like I could I kept thinking as well what if I get back to UK and I break my leg like if if I just broke my arm like literally something so small like that that you just you don't realize like and I've just then gave up a massive job in Dubai to just go and be on Love Island but I'm then not going to be on Love Island and there's also a chance that you can't even 
get in the show. Like once you get to Mallorca, you could quarantine, you could not go on. So there's so many like things running through my head and I'm thinking, oh my God, like it's such a risk. Like what shall I do? Um, but this is what I mean. You've got to make these sacrifices in life. You've just got to like, you've just got to do it. Like if you, if you feel like that's what you want to do. And I, I just kept thinking in my head, Cheyenne, do you see yourself like staying in Dubai and like living in Dubai? And I was like, no, like I don't. <clears throat> and I don't want to like, miss this opportunity to go on Love Island. Even though Love Island were like something I would never ever do, it was just like a different opportunity to take me down a different path than what I was going down. And like, I was thinking like, yeah, this path not, might not be for me and this next one might not be, but it might lead me to something else. So I just thought, I'm just gonna do it. So I did it and I'm so happy I did it. Like, I do not regret it one bit. Like, I love my life now and, like, I love all, like, the opportunities and everything that it's come. Um, it's really good. And it's so weird as well because I'm still single. <laughs> like, but hey ho, we'll see. Um, so what countries did you go to? So I only did four flights. So I went to Russia, which was really weird because, like, um, I would never, ever go to Russia. Um, but, yeah, it was, like, it was nice. Um, I went to a place in India, I went to Vienna which is like Austria and then I can't remember the other place I went to, they were like a turnaround place so I didn't actually get off but yeah, um, they're the places I went to. And then the next question is, was your schedule difficult? Um, I wouldn't say it's difficult but it's tiring, like you can get like quite a lot of flights but then you also get days off so you've just got to spend them days off very like wisely. Like, Obviously, if you're going to beach clubs every day, which is what I were doing, I was literally like, I, the thing is, I was like trying to keep such a high because I miss my family and friends so much. I would literally cry myself to sleep. Like if I were in a beach club drunk, I wasn't thinking about my family and friends then. So I'd just keep doing that and then it'd make me feel better. I know it sounds so bad, but yeah. Stop doing that, no. Um. Right. Next question is, would you ever go back to Emirates or cabin crew at all? Um, I would never go back to Emirates. However, like, I would definitely go back to doing cabin crew, like, later on in life. Um, that's, like, a job that I always will want to do. And, like, I can't imagine me ever doing a different job than that other than what I'm doing at the minute. Um, so, yeah, like... <laughs> so, I would probably do... Um, cabin crew again definitely but I'd always probably go back to Jack 2 um, and then the next question is how often would you come back to the UK and did you get a flight back to the airport of your choice um, so yeah you would get um, a flight back to the airport of your choice so like your home base like so mine in Manchester you get to pick that and then you get like flight backs to you can get flights back to there but in your first six months you're in probation and you can't choose your flights like you can't say I want to go to Manchester you just get a like roster and that is what that is what it is like you can't change it you can't swap onto someone else's for the first six months after the six months you can swap as many one as you want but I didn't get a Manchester I didn't get a London in my first few ones and I was thinking oh my god like in like my first month I've not and like there were people that were going home and I was just like maybe just if I went home like that would just reset me and like make me think like oh it's not as bad but the fact that I just didn't know when I was going to like next see my family or my friends and like it was just a kind of a waiting game it just killed me so much like I wanted to know when I was going to see my family and <clears throat> also I had a family wedding in August and they wouldn't let me have it off they were like saying like no it, unless it's like your brother or your mum you can't have it off Bro, like, I'm literally a bridesmaid for my auntie and uncle, and they're like, no, you can't. So, I was like, okay then, I'll leave. <laughs> um, so, what was McDonald's like in Dubai? Um, shit, so shit. I, I literally hate McDonald's in Dubai. It's so bad, like, don't waste your money on it. Um, what's your work-life balance like, and do you get lonely? See, this is what it, it. This is what's killed me. Like, I got so lonely. Like, I get lonely here in the UK, and like, when I can just drive, get in my car, and go and see like my friends, and like, 
go and see my family so being in Dubai like he's very isolating and like when you travel in different places and you're in an hotel that's like you're on your own in, in a different hotel in a different country it is very isolating and I think you've got to be such an independent person and so happy with your own company to do the job um but yeah um like the work the work life balance like you've just got to like be really careful where you sleep and everything like i said if you are going out a lot and then you're working you're just gonna tire yourself out um but i can't really talk because i was so guilty of that um what was the next question how did you cope with the expense of dubai I didn't like I literally I, I'm one of these people where it's like if I want to buy something I'll buy it if I want to go somewhere I won't say oh I can't afford it like I, I won't be able to afford it but I'd just go because I just think I could die tomorrow like I'm not saying I can't afford that like I'll go into my overdraft I'll put it on a credit card like I will literally like do anything just to be able to have a good time like if I can't afford it I will find a way so when I went to Dubai um, like I said, I put all my savings into my house and I remember I saved like a bit of money left for me to um, take to Dubai but then my house that I bought needed a complete new roof which cost five grand and that literally was all my savings that I'd got left to like take to Dubai so I literally went to Dubai like waiting to get paid from Emirates and then like they do give you like a wage in advance when you first get there which is really good but then obviously that's got to last you like two months um so it is really hard like the money and everything like if you've got a family that's well off or like someone that can help you then it is really it will be really easy and um, if you're going with no savings I, I, I will say it would be really hard um but then that depends on what lifestyle you want. If you just want to be really chilled in Dubai or if you like me and you just want to go to a beach club every day, then it's expensive. Um, <clears throat> ooh. Was the training intense and how long is the training for? Right, literally the training is so intense. Like, I feel like no one warned me about how intense the training actually was. So it's for two months and um you are literally like there like five days a week and it's like constant like exams and stuff um and like it's like two months is such a long time like i did two months of training to do four flights and move back home and it still gets to me now but is where it is um at least i actually did the training like i got through all the training i did all the exams i was really proud of my little self because i'm not good with exams and i'm not really the brainiest people anyway um but yeah it is really intense the training like but once you get that over and done with it's the best feeling ever like once you've finished all your exams and like you then like get your roster it's, oh, hey. it's so exciting like once you've got like your uniform like honestly everything else then is just really good um the next question as well is do you need to know arabic you don't need to know Ar arabic but in your exams there will there will be questions like based on like how do you say like hello in arabic and it's literally just like they'll go through it and it's like i think it's shukran shukran i think shukran is hello i don't know if that's hello or thank you so i'm sorry if that's wrong um i think it I think shukran thank you <laughs> yeah it is shukran thank you um i think i'm not 100 because i've not like been in dubai recently but um yeah you don't need to know arabic but like a little basic things like hello and thank you is, i think that's absolutely fine but it's like if you don't know them it's like oh my god you can't work for emirates so don't worry about that <clears throat> uh, what questions were you asked in the video in what questions were you asked in the interview and um, oh yeah sorry this next question is what questions were you asked in the interview stop no um so the questions that you were asked is like a time when you went above and beyond in a previous job um i remember like they asked me once they asked me did you do any modeling 
and I were like, I wonder why they've asked me that. Um, and my mum said to me, it might be because like, because obviously Emirates is a Muslim airline, they might obviously not allow any like nudity. So if I'd ever done any shoots that like contain nudity, then it's not ideal. Um, but yeah, they asked me a time when I've gone above and beyond, a time where we were like, really stepped out of my comfort zone to help someone or like, and it was really easy for me because I've done cabin crew before, so all my questions were just based on like previous flying experiences. But honestly, like, don't worry if you've just done an office job for like eight years and then you go into cabin crew. Like, they're looking for like skills, like personal skills and stuff. Like, it's only going to be the same if you've done an office job, if you've done a cabin crew job, um, if you've helped someone. Like, you're still going to have them abilities. So I won't worry about it if you've done a completely different job. It's um, you've just got to be yourself and like show that you're a really like kind and caring person. Obviously, if you're not, then don't show that because you're being fake. Um, but um, yeah, just be yourself. Um, I remember thinking the interview was just so chill. Like I was so nervous. Like I remember I went to Manchester the night before, stayed in the hotel where the interview was. So I was like up early, ready, and I was so nervous. And I was thinking like when I got out, I was like. I literally just felt like I was having a chat with this lady. It was so chilled out. It was nice. Um, it was not like, right, what have you got that offers to Emirates? It was like that, so it was fine. Um, do you actually have to be the correct height? Yeah, you do have to be a certain height, but that's just due to like putting the bags in the overhead locker. So yeah, they do check your height. Um, and the last question that I'm going to answer is, what was the accommodation like? <clears throat> so, I was really lucky, like, my accommodation were like 20 minutes away from like the palm, which is like the main bit where everyone like would go. Um, stop biting me. No, no, no. Um, but, um, mine were like 20 minutes away from where everything was. Um, but it was so nice, like my apartment was so nice, like I had like such a huge room with like a balcony and like a massive walking wardrobe in my own bathroom, whereas some people are not as fortunate, like you just get what you'd give, like you just get what you're given, is what I mean. So like you can't have a choice on like what accommodation you have, um, you just have to put up with it. So if you put in like peak desert, you put in peak desert. But you can move accommodations like after so long. Um, but obviously you can't do that straight away. And I remember thinking like if I don't like my accommodation, like there's no way I'm staying in it for six months. Um, a lot of people like move off and get their own apartment. Um, but yeah, my apartment were really nice, so I were really lucky. And I was so lucky as well because Dom, like one of my like best friends now, like literally, I'll never like not like be in contact with her she were on my training um so we met literally like in in his training and she's like a friend for life now and it's so crazy because i never thought i'd leave dubai like like missing friends like i was just so scared at first that i wasn't gonna met friends and yeah it's just nice to know now i've got like friends in dubai um but yeah like my old dubai and like emirates experience like it was really positive it was such a massive like learning curve and I'm so glad that I did it to know which path I then needed to go down. I would recommend it to anyone because it's such a good opportunity like job wise and stuff. Like you get to travel so many places, you live in Dubai, you get to find yourself as well. It's like, it's such a self like growth thing to do. Um, and I, I reckon a lot of people who live there like would say they're a different person since living in Dubai. Um, but yeah, I think that's all my questions answered. Um, <clears throat> if you do have any more questions, then leave them in the comments and I'll do a part two if people want to know more. But I feel like I've covered quite a lot. So yeah, thank you for watching this um, little Q&A. And I'm so sorry about Zara constantly distracting. She's been a little terror today, aren't you? She don't look impressed. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment any more questions that you might have. Bye.